Nick's family, what's popping? You gotta love what you saw from Frank last night. You gotta love it. Um, I think he quieted his haters down just a little bit. Made them take a second look and say, hey, maybe this kid's not gonna be a bus, right? Um, I'm excited about his future. I'm excited about the Knicks' future because we have him. I think he's, uh, I think he's on pace to do some good things in this league uh, and to help the, the Knicks start to turn things around. I'm definitely excited. You should be excited. We should all be excited. Um, let's not go overboard yet. You know, Knicks fans, we always jump off the bridge. But, uh, you know, let, let, let's be excited and, and really just uh, encourage them and watch them develop. Uh, but I think that he's on the right path. Poise. The kid is always under control. He's always cool. He's never flustered. Um, and you need that in your point guard. Especially from the point guard. When you're the point guard, your teammates look to you uh, to kind of see the... You know, what's the temperature of this game right now? If you look flustered and, and and you know, like like you're, you're not under control and, and you're a little bit hot under the collar, then they're going to feel the same way, right? You set the pace as the point guard. You set the tone of the game, right? And, and, and so when you're cool, they feel cool, right? They feel like everything's going to be okay. And he brings that to the table. You know, that's something that I really like about him. Um, and I think his teammates sense it and they feel it. And it's part of the reason why they played so well last night. Right. I think they were down seven or eight points when he got in the game. Uh, but his demeanor and the way he orchestrates the offense and also defense helped to... Uh, Get the get the game back under control, and uh, you know move the Knicks in the direction they went in last night. Respect. He demands respect, and he doesn't demand respect by screaming and yelling at people. Uh, he demands respect just in his in his actions and the things that he does on the floor. Right. Um, when the team is, if you if there's a player who you know, Tim Hardaway or someone doesn't really know exactly what to do at that point in time. He comes and he gets the ball and they give it to him without a problem. And then he runs some other action. And the reason that they don't have a problem with it is because they know that um, he's going to make the right play. He's not looking to shoot every time he gets the ball. Right. And he's going to make good decisions. I also notice that he makes the right pass to the right person at the right time, you know, uh, and then that person, you know, it's on them to make the right play. But usually it flows naturally. When you make the right pass, the right play flows naturally. And, and whoever is the recipient of uh, uh, your pass to them understands the right play to make. It's like he sees the game one or two plays ahead sometimes. That that ability, uh, that skill is going to continue to develop and is going to make him a really, really intelligent point guard. He already is. You can see it. He orchestrates the offense beautifully. He knows, uh, like Jeff Hornacek said in the past, he knows what plays to call at the right time. Um. I think we're looking at a pure point guard who will have the ability to take over the game uh, with his scoring if he needs to in the future. I think maybe not now, right now. I think he's kind of a, you know, uh, uh, pull up off the screen and roll, but I think he has the ability. He definitely has the physical characteristics um, to be able to, take over the game, take over the scoring load, help with the scoring load in the future. Defense. He plays defense. Uh, from the time the ball is inbounded till we get the rebound, he's playing defense. He's very attentive 
if, if you watch him, um, you know, he pays attention to everything that's going on around him. It's like he sees it all, you know, and he's um, he's watching his man. He's watching your man. He's watching the ball. And he's instructing people, telling people where to go, where to move, you know, putting people in the right position. You need that from your leader on both sides of the ball. And he's already doing it. And I think he'll continue to do that in the future. You need that from your leader on both sides of the ball. Um, when he came in the game, I think the Knicks were down. I think they were down seven or eight points. Um, his defense. He's like glue on defense, right? Uh, uh, like I said, with him, you know, kind of telling people where to go and and, and and putting them in the right positions, that's like your glue guy, right? Because he's coaching you right on the floor. Um, so he's putting it all together for you, right? And when he came in, because Jerry Jack did a good job defensively, he did a decent job, but because he has long arms, right, he could defend the ball, but he could take a step or two over to help out over here, but still have, because his arms are long, he can reach out and help out and still be with his man. I mean, those are just physical tools that you can't replicate, right? Uh, uh, and, and it makes him so dynamic on defense. I mean, the guy is going to be able to eventually guard the one, the two, and the three, right, because of his length. You know, and he's, you know, he's going to get stronger. I want you to check out this clip. Uh, it's from a YouTube channel called The Knicks Wall. They do a series called uh, Knicks Film Study, and they do a really good job of breaking down the Knicks. Um, check out their channel. You might like them. And I want you to pay attention to the defensive nuances of Frank. Uh, he does things that really glues a defense together. All right, so check this out. Notice the on-ball pressure. He's constantly pressuring the ball. Now you'll see here, he recognizes Booker isn't a deep threat. So he stays home. And then when Booker drives, he helps. Now even here, he's aware that there's a cutter. He sees it. Like I said, he sees his man and your man. He sees it, able to tip the tip the pass you see the little move to fight around that screen right still fighting off the screen Kylo Quinn switches but then he switches back to his man stay straight arms up again constant pressure on ball pressure fight over the screen McDermott calls for a switch. He recognizes it. Boom, he's on his man. Arms high. Look at the length of his arms. Now watch here. He's helping in. Recovers back to his man. On him. Arms straight up. They call the foul. But he's still, he's basically straight up in the air. That's great defense. I'll take those fouls all day long. You see him again, fighting around that screen. Got his arms up long, boom. Tips the pass away. Again, he's attentive to the cut, was able to pay attention to that cutter, get back to his man. And if you pay attention throughout this clip, he's barking out instructions. He's telling people where to go and what to do. Those small details, those small nuances, um, those are the hallmarks of a great defensive team.
I'm not saying that this is a great defensive team. Uh, what I'm saying is that Frank has those, he exhibits those small details. Um, he has them already. And eventually, or hopefully, they'll brush off on his teammates. Um, you know, they'll watch film. They'll break down the film. And they'll be able to point out some things that he's doing. Other players will see it. And then hopefully they'll follow suit. You know, um, he has the makings of a, a defensive player of the year one day in the future. And that's rare for a guard because it's hard to uh, quantify a guard's defensive impact. You know, with big men, you know, you have blocks and rebounds. You know, for a guard, yeah, you have steals. Uh, but, you know, there's so many good guards in the league. It, it's very hard to quantify uh, a, a guard's defensive impact. So, you know, I think, though, you can see it in his game. When you break that down, it, it is very evident. Uh, and he has the ability, I think, to be a defensive player of the year. I spent a lot of time on Frank. He deserves it, though. You know, we've been waiting a while to see him play. Uh, so, you know, we've been wanting to, you know, break down his game for a while. we will finally getting a chance to. I do want to give a shout out to KP for dropping another 30 points. Um, I don't know if Brooklyn was playing as aggressive as some of those other teams, but um, he did his thing again. I noticed that Hornacek played a little bit more in the post. All right, KP had some post ups. First play of the game, he was in the post. Uh, went to uh, Cancer in the post. You know, so maybe K, uh, maybe Hornacek isn't as opposed to altering his style of play as I thought. Uh, KP was definitive in his shot selection. And when I say definitive is, you know, he didn't hesitate. He caught the ball. If he was going to shoot it, he let it fly. Right? You want that. You know, that keeps that keeps the defense on guard and, 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 and not being able to push him around as much uh, when he has the ball because he's letting it go. I asked for a leader. Hornacek put Jack in the game you know what Jack played a good game and he was a leader he was um he put people in positions that's you know and, and he said I want to get the ball here get it there I seen a pass the ball to Tim Hardaway and said pass it down there Tim Hardaway passed it right there down to uh, KP in the post that's the kind of leadership you need that you need that I know I said, you know, I didn't like Jack's game, but uh, I liked this game last night. And uh, now there's another little twist because Jared Jack doesn't have a guaranteed contract. He's actually the 16th man. When Noah comes back, um, there'll be 16 players. What do we do now? Something worth watching. What do we do now? Do we let go a young guy? Um, because in order to keep Jared Jack, you got to waive someone uh, who has a guaranteed contract. What do we do? Maybe it's Sessions. Who knows? Maybe Sessions gets waived. Um, I like the one-two punch right now of Jack and Nilakina. Oh, last night, I liked it. We don't know what's going to happen later. I liked what I saw last night. Before I roll, there's a lot to talk about. I'm not going to get into it today, but uh, before I roll, Cleveland. We play Cleveland tomorrow night. They're going to be physical. They're going to try to beat up KP, I believe. I want to see how KP responds to that. Like I said, Brooklyn didn't really bring that physical type of game. Cleveland will. Not sure exactly who's going to guard KP. Um... It'll likely be between Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, and Jay Crowder. Crowder and Thompson can both play that physical type of game. Maybe not so much Kevin Love. Um, so I, I really would like to see how KP is going to respond because Brooklyn didn't play that type of game. All right, but uh, I'm hoping that KP is bracing for it and he's ready for it. Um, Jer Jack is going to be a good guy to start in this game, definitely. Right, because he, you know, he, he's used to that physical kind of play. Um, 
And, uh, you know, he has the mental toughness uh, to uh, uh, withstand it and to hopefully keep the team calm and together. Um, you know, Jerry Jack might prove to be something good for us. Let's see. You know, we'll see what happens. I want to see how Frank's going to respond to this game as well. And you know, this game is going to be a little bit more physical for Frank. So let's see what he does. You know, this team will probably be smarter defensive. Not probably. They're going to be smarter defensively. So let's see what happens. I want to see how Frank responds. I'm really interested in that. Um, I will say this. In four games, uh, the Knicks have played one, two championship contenders in a playoff team. They got blown out by OKC. They responded well versus Detroit, but they couldn't hold on. Blown out by Boston. Terrible game. Responded well against Brooklyn. All right. So in two of their four games, they've had a 20 point lead. We won a game. Let's see how we handle the prosperity. All right. Let's see if we, we had an edge last night. Let's see if we keep an edge t uh, tomorrow night. All right. If we can keep that edge. I'm looking for that. I'm looking to see, can we keep that edge? And can we play a desperate type of game? Because we played desperate for a win last night. Can we play a desperate type of game? You know, sorry for the short take on, on KP and the rest of the gang. Uh, but I really did want to get into, you know, finally had a chance to talk about Frank. So I wanted to get into it some. I want to give another shout out to the Knicks wall. Uh, thank you for letting me use the clip and um, keep up the good work. You guys, go check them out. And um, I will holler at you tomorrow.